All right, here we go. Question number seven in our college algebra homework number five in my lab math. It says find the vertical asymptote, the domain, x and y intercepts, then graph. That's like four things. One, two, three, four. Let's get started. Up here in the right hand corner, I've got the function written down. And to make sure that the denominator is going to produce a vertical asymptote, we need to make sure that this function won't reduce. And so we're going to need to uh, try to factor the numerator and see if we're going to get a factor of x plus 2. Okay, and actually I don't think I need to go very far. If we were to factor this numerator, if we were to read the signs, the signs both have to be negative, which means if this does factor, neither one of the factors is going to have a plus because of the way the signs are. And so that means that we don't need to worry about this function reducing. So therefore, to find the vertical asymptote, we need to set the denominator equal to zero and solve. Moving the two over gives me negative two, and then there is our vertical asymptote. Notice it already has the x equal, so I just need the negative 2. All right, choose the correct domain. And the domain choices, these are in interval notation. And so over here in our window, if we were going to convert to interval notation, uh, what I want you to realize is that if you know the vertical asymptote, then you know the restriction. The restriction of this function is going to be x cannot be negative 2. Those coincide. Uh, so if x cannot be negative 2 in interval notation, that means that x can be anything from minus infinity up to negative 2, not including negative 2. Skip over to the other side of negative 2 and keep going. So there is our domain in interval notation, okay, the x-intercepts are, well look at this, it gives us one of the x-intercepts and it wants us to give the other x-intercept. And so to teach you how to find the x-intercepts, what you do is you take the numerator, you want to set that equal to zero and solve. x squared minus 6x plus 8. All right, so x-intercepts are going to be, if we set the numerator equal to 0 and solve, again, to solve a quadratic, factoring is usually the fastest method, if it'll factor. So the signs are both going to be negative. x and x give me x squared. Are there numbers that multiply to make 8? that add and make 6. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 plus 2 is 6. Yes, there are. And so then if I set each factor equal to 0 and solve x equal 2, notice that this is the x-intercept over here. This They already gave me that one. Doing the other x-intercept, if I move the minus 4 over x equal 4 is the other x-intercept, and it does need to be written as an ordered pair. So just so you know, an x-intercept always has a y-coordinate of 0. So that's going to be 4 comma 0. And the y-intercept is found by letting x be 0. Okay, so in other words, if you want to find a y-intercept, what you really want to find is f of 0. And so we're going to plug a 0 in for every x, and then we're going to work that out and see what we get. Going back to the function, plugging in a 0 for every x and working that out, that's going to be 0 minus 0 plus 8 over 2, 8 over 2 is 4, that is our y-intercept, which needs to be written as an ordered pair, and if x-intercepts have a y-coordinate of 0, then y-intercepts have an x-coordinate of 0. 
0 comma 4. Fantastic. So far so good. Now I have to pick the correct graph, okay? So let's see if we can find a graph that has all of this information. And pop, can I pop that out? Is there any way to zoom in on that? I don't know. That's hard to tell. Let's pop this one out over here and look at it. So what are we looking for? We're looking for x-intercepts of 4 and 2. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. This definitely does not show x-intercepts at 2 and 4. So it's not C. Okay, this shows x-intercepts at 2 and 4 and a y-intercept at 4 because these are by 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So that's, this one could be correct. And then if I pop this one out again, to, again, this one does not show the right x-intercepts. Okay, or y-intercept, that's not right either. So by the process of elimination, we can tell that B is the only answer choice that has the correct x-intercepts and y-intercept. And I don't know if you noticed, but it also has the uh, vertical asymptote, which was x equal negative 2. It does show that vertical asymptote there. So I feel pretty good about B. Bam. All right, so there you go. Uh, before I leave you, let's again, let's go to Desmos and show how that can help us verify our correct answer. If we put this into Desmos, we have x squared minus 6x plus 8 over x plus 2. Enter. And then if I graph that, notice that that doesn't look, look quite the same as that. And the reason is because the window settings are not the same. So let me show you real quick how to change those window settings. If you click on graph settings, you can actually scroll down here to the x-axis and you can change that to be the x minimum of our window over here. So our uh, lowest x was negative 10. Uh, tab and the biggest was 10 so that sets our X to negative 10 and 10 and then for the Y we can set that to be negative 50 and 50 and then if I get out of this now this window is the same as this window and can you see that that looks the same as this guy, which definitely doesn't look like this or this. Yeah, so that's how Desmos can help us. It can also help us verify our uh, vertical asymptote, x equal negative 2, shows that that line does fit nicely in there. Yeah, so Desmos is a nice help. Man, I hope all of that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below or you can text me, and thanks for watching.